Hello everybody, welcome back. I know it's been a little while since I have posted a video, but uh, life's been pretty crazy with moving houses and whatnot. But uh, with the new ban list, it's kind of also you know reinvigorated a um, little bit of passion for the game. And the first thing I wanted to try out post ban list was Magispectors. It was something that I'd actually picked a core up before the ban list just because it uh, had intrigued me a little bit before that. And then obviously Kieran being unbanned just makes it even sweeter. So. Uh, I took this to uh, locals, we kind of started a little bit early on the ban list, so I had a kind of an unofficial locals where the new ban list was um, being followed and um, deck performed really well. The grind of the deck is just really crazy, um, especially with like the new the porcupine. So I'll get straight into the, the monsters. So we've got um, Bumbuku, which of course adds monsters on normal or special. Yata adds um, spells on normal or special. Um, so these are both one card combos um, with the deck. And then the best card in the deck for sure is the Porcupine. Um, being able to bounce this with Kieran um, when you know going into grind games and to keep resummoning this, um, yeah, it, it, and just being able to reset your cards all the time, um, this single handedly just carries. Um, playing one Ogama, one Kieran, and then also playing a small Draco Slayer engine of three Majesty and one. Dynamite. So as far as the monsters go, um, this is all I'm playing for engine. Uh, it's a very small engine, I know, um, and there was a couple of games where the consistency really um, was noticed, um, but I also really like the, the non-engine numbers we're able to hit in this deck. And so um, there's other things you could do to kind of improve this, but um, like the super heavy engine, um, even consider like maybe like the Horus engine to an extent to maybe like maybe insulate the board a bit better, and then you can also you know zombie vampire into engine potentially. But um, yeah, this this was this was good. So I played it as a very control based mid range deck, um, not as much of a combo deck. But um, for the rest of the Magic cards, I was playing three Wind, one Cyclone, um, one Majesty's Pegasus, one Secret Village and one Magispecta Tempest. So I'm not playing the other trap. Um, and my logic being was this, is that uh, in, in a deck where you have these really searchable disruption cards like, you know, Tempest or the, the trap, um, the thing I had to consider is I, obviously I don't want to draw Tempest and the other trap. There's also Secret Village. You don't really want to see these. There's, there's, there's cards that you don't really want to see, especially going second, right? Um, and then the other thing is that the Porcupine only resets spells. And so the only difference between the, the Cyclone and the Trap is that this destroys, the Trap vanishes. Um, and so my recursion all, a lot of the time was actually going Porcupine to reset Cyclone and just having that disruption always available to me. Sometimes resetting Tempest, like if, you, if, you're, if you're resetting Tempest, you're probably winning the game because you've already resolved this once generally. Um, and so resetting Tempest for a second time is like you should just be winning. Um, and then as far as the other ratios, um, Majesty Pegasus is a one card combo, or one, uh, you need any other pendulum, so Majesty plus any of the other pendulums is is a combo as well, um, and it was very useful as well, just being able to, um, and so sometimes, you know, you'd have Majesty and Dynamite set up, you would pendulum summon, and then you could use Dynamite to summon out the Majesty search, and then you could, you know, still combo if that was, it's, just, it's, another, it's another way to play if you do get stopped. There's obviously very few pendulum monsters in the deck if you're looking at the numbers here, but um, yeah, it comes up when it does. And yeah, I did say, like I said, there was some issues with consistency, um, but in those times, the the hands that I was drawing was just all non-engine, and you know you're you're able to kind of hold the opponent off a little bit until you're ready to until you finally draw a starter. But um, then going into non-engine, so the rest of the deck is non-engine, so it's 19, so it's 3 cross out and a call by. Um, these kind of count as extenders to an extent, if they, you know, stop your plays and you're able to kind of keep pushing. Um, then we've got 3 Nibiru and 3 Droll. Um, I think Droll's going to become a lot better, obviously Nibiru stocks have increased as well. Droll is particularly good in this deck, um, even if it wasn't for the ban list, you'd still play Droll probably at you know, three copies or so, because opening it alongside, obviously there's something I one of, but op opening it alongside Wind or Pegasus allows you to play, um, and this came up a number of times as well, was Droll and Wind, for example, to be able to um, start comboing. Uh, and then we've also got Ash, and we're just going fairly generic here, uh, Vela and Imperm. 
playing all the gold rares today. It's a shame the Thaler doesn't go in gold. I'd play it in gold otherwise, but um, yeah, so the, these are the 15 hand traps, um, all fairly generic. Um, sometimes Imperm in this deck is a little bit of a crux in that, you know, you, between Wind and Tempest and Cyclone, you, you'd want to have any number of these set. Um, and so sometimes Imperm becomes a bit cloggy in that you can't set it, but I mean, obviously just hold it. And so, uh, if I'm going second, sometimes that's, I tend to side this out more often than Thaler if I'm going, going second. Sometimes, it just depends. I, well, sorry, more, no, more, going first, sorry, going first. I'll tend to side out Imperm down to more like one copy just as a cross out target rather than siding out uh, the Veiler as such. But I'm generally siding down quite a number of hand traps just to more uh, fit in some of the other cards from the side deck. Um, for the side deck, while we're just talking about it really quick, um, it was more just a, a thrown together job. Um, I figured with new band list, someone was going to rock up with some kind of Orchest or Thunder Dragon pile and uh, they did. And so Lancia and Bestials came in clutch. Um, Cosmic and Evenly as just kind of, you know, generic spell trap things, but also pretty decent into Fire King. Uh, and then I was just playing Solemn Judgment as just another kind of card to help stop against something like Evenly Match. I was anticipating that a, a number of people would be kind of playing this now with the lack of um, Omni Negates. And so that's also why I kind of went in Lancia as well. There's just something else to kind of protect my board from Evenly Matched. Um, so between Lancia and Judgment, kind of had a little bit of insulation against um, a couple of those side deck cards. Um, and then for the extra deck, this is where I think I would definitely make changes. Um, I was, I'm pretty happy with the main deck. I think the like the the smaller engine, lots of non-engine. Uh, I was pretty happy with that. Um, extra deck wise, two Orthrus new. Um, I wouldn't change more than two. Um, the second one, like, you, again, if you're getting to a second one, again, you should, should probably be winning. But sometimes the second one, and the only the only time I really used the second one, was more so to get back Kieran from the. Um, extra deck. So if Kieran gets to the extra deck, it's very difficult to get it back out. Um, Nu is, uh, is the only way to kind of get that back out of the extra deck, um, uh, as well as like exceed the pendulum, for example. But yeah, it, it's pretty awkward if Kieran gets it, to, it makes it to the extra deck. So you're happy for it to be in the graveyard or in the hand because you can magic back to wind to summon it back out. But yeah, getting it to the extra deck is a little bit more uncomfortable. And so that's why the second Nu is Pretty important, or it comes, it comes in handy. Um, access code, Selene, these are you know perfect cards to play in the deck. Um, Exceed and Beyond. Um, Beyond is very strong. Um, SP, IP. Um, IP is a bit tricky, um, because you, usually what happens is turn one, you're trying to do the Orthrus combo to get to like Ryu and Secret Village, but so IP doesn't really come up. So this is probably a cuttable spot because like turn one, you're not really making this. And then turn three, you don't really need this at all. Um, and I think the thing that I was lacking in this extra deck was more um, offensive things to do in turn three. Um, so like if, if Selene Access got stopped, for example, then like you needed the other things to fall back on. Um, I was playing two Ryu. Um, I was playing one Magister Paladin. I, I never found a reason why I would summon this side. I don't know if it's necessary. Um, Dweller is crazy when you can play it. Um, Exxon Knight was really strong in the extra deck. I didn't get to summon it, but um, I played against Kashtira and that was their kind of <laughs> go-to target. Um, and then Typhon and um, the Fusion guy. I liked the Fusion guy. I think this guy definitely has some utility, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure about Magister Paladin, to be honest. I think what I would play moving forward is definitely some more offensive cards. It could be like if I was to keep IP, maybe you'd play like Unicorn as another Link 3. I don't know, um, but just definitely more things that can kind of push through an opponent's board turn three if they were to like break your board, for example, or just to help get to your OTK a lot easier because you don't necessarily end on heaps of disruptions. It's more like Secret Village just to prevent them from setting up. So, I mean, you've got Kieran and you've got either the the spell, um, the Cyclone or the, the Tempest, but I think, yeah, just, just some more offensive cards in the extra deck that isn't just like a full-on board wipe like Exton Knight. Um, obviously like SP was really good, but yeah, just uh, like more, more options I think would be something that I'd want to try in the future. But, um, otherwise I definitely enjoyed playing the deck. I think the deck is, um, really, really enjoyable. Um, I'll, I'll quickly show the one card combo in case you haven't seen this before, but, um, 
Yeah, I'll show the uh, one card combo. Okay, so rather than just show the one card combo, I'll do it in some test hands. I'm sure we will see it. Um, there's a number of different ways to kind of get to the one card combo, so we'll see how we go. I'm sure we'll get the combo there. Um, we've got Imperm, Majesty Pegasus, Crow, Majesty Pegasus, and Win. So this does do the combo. Um, this is probably the best way to do it. I really like the, the Garda opening is stronger. Plays into Droll a bit more, but um, it gets wind in rotation if you don't already open it like we have here. But uh, the, essentially the combo goes Crow, Search, Wind. Um, in this example though, I'm just going to grab Cyclone um, because that's what we opened. Um, and now we can fire off the wind, tribute the Yata to summon out the Bunbuku. The Bumbuku will search out the Porcupine. And I, starting with Yada works out a little bit better because you just you get that free value out of the, the Porcupine. It means you just get to the, the wind set. Uh, having this in rotation is always good. So you can activate this to special. Uh, this is a quick effect. So like doing this in your opponent's turn, like bouncing it off Kieran, summoning it back again to reset wind and cyclone and things like that. Um, super crazy. Um, I realized now in my, my deck profile, I said you could reset uh, the, the counter trap and obviously that's uh, that's cheating. So I, I think I did that once, whoops. Um, yeah, this only sets spells. That's why it's hitting Cyclone and Wind. That's that's why we're playing this, not the other trap. Um, my bad, but that's okay. Um, yeah, so Yamarashi can reset the Wind here. Um, if you start with Bumbuku, you just don't get this. You just don't have Wind. Um, so you potentially try and access it later. But um, with these two, we're gonna link off into the um, Orthos new, this is obviously the biggest Imperm Vela bait in the deck, so having cards like um, Cyclone going second, um, Cross Out, Wind as well, these are all ways that you can kind of dodge the, the targeting. The issue is that you obviously limit your options from the extra deck by doing so because you're losing your link arrows, but um, yeah, that's just, it's, it, but it just means that this resolves. Uh, so then the Orthos new will add back uh, two from the extra deck and send two. So depending on what you have in your hand, uh, generally speaking, uh, like obviously I've already opened Majesty Pegasus, but um, in this example, we're definitely gonna be sending um, the Toad because this is gonna get us to our other interruption being the counter trap. And then we can send, I mean, I don't hate sending a, a Porcupine because this one's gonna end up getting scaled. Um, we don't actually have to say, we'll, we'll, we'll send the third Majesty Pegasus as well, just so it's it's gone. And we send these over. Uh, this is what you do in the, the normal one card combo. Uh, then you could set your pendulum scale. Now in this, again, in this example, it's gonna look a little bit different. Um, if if at all we do get stopped, um, we've got Majesty plus another pendulum to, to do its, its thing, which is to place the Dynamite Knight. Uh, it adds it to your hand, sorry, and pops a, a scale. Uh, and then the Dynamite Knight can summon out the Majesty, which can then search for a field spell. But look, we'll do it this way. We'll just pretend that these aren't in hand for now. Obviously, this, we could go further with this, but we don't, we're don't. we kind of locked, so there's no point to. Um, we'll Pendulum Summon, and we're going to Pendulum Summon the two that we sent. Um, so we can trigger both of these. Um, Ogama's going to set directly from the deck the Counter Trap. And we're searching for Secret Village. The other option you could play, of course, is um, Necro Valley, which is pretty good. There's a couple times where that would have been a, a really great card in to certain matchups but it is what it is um so yeah tempest we can activate this um we can overlay these for the new now uh, the the ryu sorry and we're going to set the cyclone so again in this in this hand this is what i mentioned like going first imperm sometimes a bit funny because you'd much rather just have these options here um, because each of these is going to help you get to Kieran as well. So um, obviously there's no Kieran here yet, but Kieran is very easily accessible. Um, we didn't pendulum some of these out. There was no point to. We can just hold them in our hand. Um, because it, because we're locked into Magic Spectres and Draco Slayers from the extra deck, um, the only thing we can really do with them is... I mean, we could turn those two into a Magister Paladin to search for a pendulum in the end phase. Uh, we could summon out this guy and have our monsters, like our, our cards be protected, which is probably fine, but I mean, we're already getting absolutely bodied by Nibiru here if Nibiru comes down. So yeah, anyway, um, <clears throat> so then going into our opponent's turn, um, all the, so our interruptions as such, we've got Secret Village obviously locking out spells. We've got a pop and a monster in the gate. Um, we're always tributing off the new first, 
um, with one of our effects. Um, so for example, we might go for a cyclone to tribute and pop something. So we're definitely going to tribute the, the new to pop something. And then the Ryu can trigger next to detach and summon from the deck a level six or lower wind spellcaster, which is where Kieran then comes into play. Um, and then from here, this is when we um, have some options. Um, the other thing we um, could do, oh, so what, what we're probably going to do next is because Kieran currently can't really do anything except bounce itself, we could go for a wind to tribute off the Ryu, um, and that can summon out Bunbuku, because then Bunbuku can search for the Porcupine, who is a quick effect to special, and so then, you know, we've used wind, um, Porcupine can come down now, and Porcupine can reset the Cyclone or the wind, either or, um, and then Kieran has fodder to bounce then as well. Tempest has fodder to tribute and negate as well. Uh, and that's kind of the, the game plan there. And then we're just playing um, a bit of a control game where we're constantly recycling Wind and Cyclone, not Tempest. Okay, so apologize that I said that already. Um, case of misreading um, halfway through a, a locals, I guess. But um, yeah, so and you just, you're constantly recycling these till you kind of outgrind your opponent. Now, obviously with Kieran as well, constantly bouncing back the Yamarashi is really strong to then keep resetting your cards um, going into each turn. But yeah, um, I won't I won't do any more more test hands from there. I'll just I'll leave it I'll leave it at that. But uh, yeah, that's the deck. Definitely give it a go if you're interested in this this kind of play style. Um, there's definitely other avenues to kind of building the deck. Um, I've gone for a much more control heavy mid range style deck, just focusing on like small interruptions. I'm playing it very pure, lots of non-engine, but there's definitely other combo routes that you could try with the deck. But definitely give it a go. I'll catch you in the next one.